Hello guys, today we're going to be doing a video on Valorant using the RTX 3080. We're running a Ryzen 3900X with 64 gigabytes of RAM running at 3200 megabytes. Let's go ahead and start it off with the CPU test. We are running two cores and four threads right now. And as we can see, we're getting 280 FPS to 350 FPS. Now my guess would be that uh, Valorant would use up four cores. Six and eight probably won't give you too much of a boost. But I think four cores is the sweet spot. But I guess we'll see. All right, game ended, but we are back, and I'm gonna. I've actually switched it up to four cores and four threads. Wind, show me where to go. Now we were getting what, like 320 Five. to 450 Five. FPS using two cores, four threads. Still a great experience, but for the 3080, you're not gonna be running a dual core setup, most likely. But it's just fun to test. Now, playing with four cores, our usage is pretty high up there. We are sitting in the mid 80s. CP Core 1 is sitting at 100% the whole time, so. It's pretty much at its limit. Now, if I was going to guess, having six cores or eight cores is not going to be that useful. Usually, these games use up around four cores. Frame rate, let's see if it's more stable at least. It seems very similar to what it was before. I don't know how to play these maps. I haven't played Valorant in a long time. Primate is pretty locked in now. We're sitting in the 400s the whole time. Where well, we had dips into the 300s, I believe, right? With uh, with quad core and dual core. Oh. Stay down. I don't want to deal with that guy. I don't know where he is. Now, looking at our CP cores, we can actually see that they're being used up quite well. I thought the extra two cores weren't going to be doing much, but they're at least sitting about 50%, so they're, so they're doing something. And it seems like the frame rate is also more stable. It's holding a higher frame rate uh, more consistently. So I guess there's some benefits into having the extra cores for Valorant. Now, one thing I didn't realize before, CPU Core 1 is still in the high 90s, so... That's the main core that's being used up, is CPU Core 1. It's sitting in the high 90s, high 80s. Uh, in certain situations, I don't think it was like this the whole time, but it seems like in some cases it's literally just hard carrying. Actually, taking a look at our CPU usage, we can see that CP Core 7 is kind of low compared to the other ones. Most of them are sitting in the high 40s, high 50s at least, but CP Core 7 is like just right there, it was sitting at 6%, so maybe 7 cores is the limit for Valorant. Kind of hard to tell since they're, so, they're all so jumpy, but. I think six scores is pretty much the sweet spot. If you're running a 3080, you might as well just go all out and get, um, I guess, the best CPU you can get. All right, let's jump into the actual benchmark now. All right, jumping to our GPU test. I'm gonna go ahead and optimize our settings. So material quality low, uh, texture quality can have medium or high, and detail quality low, UI quality medium. And to this thing, 1080p you probably wanna have something on. Now for all the all the bottom settings, we wanna disable all of them except for improved clarity. Probably wanna have that on. And yeah, let's jump into it. Now, I actually went ahead and played on all presets just to see how they impacted the performance. And even though some settings are GPU bound, they still, and our GPU isn't fully maxed out, is what I should say. We're sitting in the, in the, the 40s and 50% usage. We still lose out. FPS. Oh, bad aim, bad aim. So even though a setting might look like it's GPU, it's GPU bound, it definitely has some CPU, uh, it has some CPU related tasks to it as well, I guess. It's kind of hard to explain it. So, this is why we're running these settings. It's a mix between low and medium. I know we're running a 3080, but... You can obviously increase your settings, and you'll be getting a pretty similar performance. But if you want that extra 20 to 30 boost, uh, 20 to 30 FPS boost, playing on medium and low will give you that. Now, normally our FPS is ranging between the mid 400s to 500s. Something spiking up to the 600s, but that's pretty rare. And the lowest that I've seen is 350, but that doesn't happen very often. Now, something to consider is that we are playing a deathmatch, and this is more intensive on your CPU since there's more players than a normal game. And you will usually get more FPS playing like a normal ranked match. Now, also, another thing, um, your FPS is dependent on what rank you're playing in. So, if you're in a... Oh, I just gotta focus up for a second. If you are in a higher rank bracket, like let's say you're in Diamond or in Masters, there's more chances of people using their abilities than let's say Silver players. So if people are spamming their abilities, you're going to be losing frames. I'm going to go ahead and jump up to 1440p now. We played too much in 1080p already. 
Go ahead and apply it. Confirm. And the game looks so clear playing at 4040p. It's so, so clear. We don't need anti testing at this point anymore, I would say. I still have it enabled. Just because it's strictly GPU bound. FPS is sitting in the 500s, so... This is great performance. Obviously, with these games, you want to have the most amount of FPS you can get. Dominating. And I don't feel any stuttering, any lagging at all. I didn't mention this in 1080p, but the game ran perfectly the whole time. And one thing that I forgot to mention in the 1080p portion of the video was that having faster memory or a memory with better timings would probably give you a decent FPS boost. Uh, normally, in games, you don't really need to have like the best, uh, the best memory. How do I say this? Since Valorant is so CPU bound, you want to have it running at its like best case scenario, I guess. So, Three. having faster memory would probably give you a decent FPS boost compared to what I'm running right now. Now, I think soon I'm going to go ahead and jump up to 4K. We should be getting the same performance. With a 3080, you're, you're not going to be Three. struggling at all with any of these resolutions. I'm thinking that even at uh, 4K, we might be running into a CPU bottleneck, which would be kind of funny because, like, how often do you see a GPU bottleneck a CPU at 4K settings? Not very often. All right, now we're running them at 4K and performance is pretty much the same. Did it reset? Yeah, it did. I knew it. I knew it would reset. All tapping ad resets it. Okay, I was wrong. GPU is actually being fully utilized at 4K, which makes sense. I thought maybe we might be able to still bottle like our CPU. I mean GPU. But no. Now, since our GPU is being fully utilized here, we're obviously going to be seeing some Stay FPS yet. drops. We're sitting in the 400s now, which is still really good. Doesn't feel laggy at all. But, um, and the starters as well, actually. But, um, now comparing the three resolutions, 1080p and 1440p feel identical to each other. But 1440p is obviously more clear. I can spot enemies easier. The image quality just looks better overall. But 4K, there's something off about it. It just doesn't feel as good. I don't think we're there with 4K gaming yet. So 1080p and 1440p is the way to go with this game. Alright, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like. That's a I really appreciate it. See you next time.